We have two toy cars. Car one of mass two kilograms is traveling at three meters per second towards a second rail car of mass one kilogram. There is a bumper on the second rail car that engages at the moment the cars hit and does not let go. The bumper acts like a spring of spring constant k equals two newtons per meter. The second car is 10 meters from a wall. Set up and solve the system. We will also let x1 equal the displacement of mass one and x2 equal the displacement of mass two. And time t equals zero is the connection time of the two cars. To set up the system of differential equations that models the system, we use the equations force equals k times x, where k is a spring constant and x is the spring compression, and force equals m times a, where m is mass and a is acceleration. Notice by performing substitution, we can form the equation m times a equals k times x. However, k times x will be positive if the force is to the right, and it'll be negative if the force is to the left. And we have an equation for each of the two masses. So beginning with mass one, we begin with m1 times x1 double prime, which is mass times acceleration, which is equal to the spring constant k times the spring compression. So as mass one connects with mass two, notice how the spring is compressed, which will give us a force to the right, meaning a positive force. And the force of the spring is equal to the spring constant k times the spring compression, where the spring compression is equal to the difference of the displacement of mass two and mass one, given by x2 minus x1. And this should make sense because if mass two was displaced four units and mass one was displaced three units, then the spring would be compressed four minus three or one unit. And now moving to mass two, we begin with mass two times x2 double prime, which again is mass times acceleration. And now as mass two moves to the right, notice the spring is stretched, pulling the mass back to the left, and therefore the force is going to be negative. This gives us the force of the spring is negative k times the spring compression, which again is x2 minus x1. In this case, the compression is actually a stretch. And now we sub in the known values where m1 is equal to two, k is equal to two, and m2 is equal to one. Next, we simplify the right sides of the equations. The result is two x1 double prime equals negative two x1 plus two x2, and x2 double prime equals two x1 minus two x2. We also have several initial conditions. Both carts start with a displacement of zero, giving us x1 of zero equals zero, and x2 of zero equals zero. The first car is traveling at three meters per second, which gives us x1 prime of zero equals three, and the second cart starts at rest, given by x2 prime of zero equals zero. The next step is to write the system of differential equations in the form of m times vector x double prime equals k times vector x, where m is the two by two matrix that contains the coefficients of the second derivatives along the main diagonal. This gives us the two by two matrix with entries two, zero, zero, one. Then we have times vector x double prime equals matrix k contains the coefficients of x one and x two, which gives us the two by two matrix with entries negative two, 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 negative two, times vector x. The next step is to solve for vector x double prime by multiplying both sides by the inverse of matrix M. Because matrix M is a diagonal matrix, we can easily determine the inverse of matrix M by taking the reciprocals of the entries along the main diagonal, which I've shown here below. Multiplying both sides by M inverse, we end up with vector x double prime equals the two by two matrix, which we'll call matrix A, with entries negative one, one, two, negative two, times vector x. And now we can solve the system in this form. The next step is to determine the eigenvalues of matrix A. Let's do this on the next slide. To determine the eigenvalues, we need to set up and solve the equation, the determinant of the difference of matrix A and lambda i equals zero. So here we have the setup, simplifying. Next we evaluate the determinant, set it equal to zero, and solve for lambda. Here's the work. This gives us lambda equals zero or lambda equals negative three, or more specifically, lambda sub one equals zero and lambda sub two equals negative three. This also indicates that zero equals negative omega sub one squared and negative three equals negative omega sub two squared, indicating omega one equals zero and omega two equals square root three. Because we have a zero eigenvalue, 
we now know the general solution will be in the form shown here at the bottom for x of t. Again, this is the form we use when we have an eigenvalue of zero. If we have two negative eigenvalues, we use the form of x of t shown above. Our next step is to determine corresponding eigenvectors. To do this, we set up the equation, the difference of matrix A and lambda i times vector v equals a zero vector and determine a vector v. So for lambda sub one equals zero, here's the setup. Simplifying, we now need to solve the system. The system has an infinite number of solutions and therefore we can determine an eigenvector by using just one equation. Notice the first equation is negative v1 plus v2 equals zero or v1 equals v2. Let's let the eigenvector v1 equal the vector one one. And now we go through the same procedure for lambda sub one equals negative three. Here's the setup. Simplifying, using the first equation we have two v1 plus v2 equals zero or v1 equals negative one half v2. Let's let v2 equal negative two and therefore v1 equals one. This gives us a corresponding eigenvector v2 equals the vector one negative two. And now we have all the information we need to determine the general solution. Let's set this up on the next slide. Again, using the formula for x of t, when we have omega one equals zero, we have vector x equals the first eigenvector one one times the quantity a one plus b one t plus the second eigenvector one negative two times the sum of a two times cosine square root three t and b two times sine square root three t. Notice how we have the square root three here because omega two is square root three. We can also write the general solution in the form shown here on the right. Now that we have the general solution, we can use the initial conditions to determine the particular solution. Notice how we can also write the initial conditions as x of zero is equal to the vector zero, zero, and x prime of zero is equal to the vector three, zero. For the next step, we'll use the initial condition x of zero equals a zero vector to determine a one and a two. To do this, we substitute zero for t into the general solution and set it equal to the zero vector. Substituting zero for t, we end up getting the two by one matrix with entries a one plus a two and a one minus two a two equals a zero vector. You may want to pause the video and verify this. And now we need to solve the system. To do this, we can set up an augmented matrix and write it in reduced row echelon form. Notice this indicates that a one and a two are both equal to zero. So now we can simplify x or x of t. If a one and a two are both equal to zero, we can now write x of t or x as the two by one matrix where the entries are now b one t plus b two sine square root three t and b one t minus two b two sine square root three t. The next step is to find x prime of t and then use the second initial condition x prime of zero equals the vector three zero. Let's do this on the next slide. So again, the next step is to find x prime of t, which I've done here. And now we use initial condition, x prime of zero equals the vector of three zero. We substitute zero for t and set x prime of zero equal to the vector of three zero. Again, you may want to pause the video and verify this is a result. And now we need to solve the system. Here we have an augmented matrix written in reduced row echelon form. The first row indicates b one equals two the second row indicates that b2 equals square root three divided by three. So now I go back up to x of t and substitute b1 equals two and b2 equals square root three divided by three. And now we have the solution to the system. Before we go, let's talk about what we can do with this solution. We can use x of t to determine the displacement of either car at time t, where x1 of t is equal to two t plus one divided by square root three times sine of square root three t, and x2 of t is equal to two t minus two divided by square root three times sine square root three t. If we set x2 of t equal to 10 and solve for t, we can find when mass two hits the wall. Remember, it's 10 meters from the wall. This occurs at approximately 5.22 seconds. We could also use x prime of t to determine the speed of either car at time t, where x one prime of t is equal to two plus cosine square root three t, and x two prime of t is equal to two t minus two cosine square root three t. For example, we can find x two prime of 5.22 to determine the speed at which mass two hits the wall, which turns out to be approximately 3.85 meters per second. 
I hope you found this helpful.